All right, so what's due on Monday is 191 and 2. Um, they're pretty similar problems. Is, you want to look at one or the other, or do you care? Or we can look at one. Might be worth going through it. Okay. okay. So these are uh, pretty standard type problems. You know, what you want to do initially is uh, kind of figure out um, what your uh, applied stresses are. And, you know, keep in mind, these are the things that are, that if you're designing something, you'll be able to figure out. You'll have some standard sort of design equations, depending on what it is you're designing to uh, to work with to get those generated. So right when I'm starting this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these numbers written down here. Okay? Because I need all of them. So we got compressive, 1,800 in the x direction, 4,000 in the y, and then the shear on that x-axis, which I've highlighted there, is positive 2,000. It's coming up around like that. That's what it's doing, which is counterclockwise. So I just think of that as being like a couple, you know. It's not, but but that's how I remember the sign on it, you know, just so I look at it, okay? So what you want to do is identify those things. Now the next thing you want to do is just run the equation. And you know, I mentioned I've got a spreadsheet out on uh, in Moodle if you want to grab it, if you want to write one of your own or program your calculator, whatever, I, it, it's worth your while because those of you in the main line like civil and mechanical, you're going to be using this stuff again. Probably CEM too, though I don't know for sure. I imagine you do. In civil, you could do this stuff, and you do soil mechanics, and you do your advanced structures. So, okay, so there you go. So you just plug in, and you'll find a stress at 60 degrees, right there. And it's just a matter of plugging the stuff into the equation. All right, so that'll get you negative uh, 5768 there. Now that's on the 60 degree plane. Okay. So that's plane AB. That's what it is. All right, and then um, now keep in mind that this stress is normal to the plane. So what that means is that stress is doing that. That's how it's acting on plane AB. It's pushing normal to it. Okay. That's what that means. All right, so once you got that, um, then you can get the other one. Now the other one is going to be at theta equals uh, 90 degrees more than 60. So that will get you uh, 150 degrees. Twice that is 300. So you just do the exact same thing again, and you just plug in 300 degrees into the 2 theta spot there in the formula. And when you do that, you'll get uh, 
negative 16, 232. So what you get out of that. Okay. So I would call that sigma x1 for 150 degrees. That's the plane. What that is, is the normal stress on BC. That's what it is. Okay. And again, that's the stress that's normal to that plane. Like that. <coughs> now there's that shortcut formula you can use also. And what that gets you is what's referred to as sigma y1 at 60 degrees. Okay, and these are just different ways of calling out the same stress. So sigma y1 60 degrees is equal to sigma x1 150 degrees and that equals sigma BC. I mean, they're all the same thing, okay? So just get used to that nomenclature and, you know, how it's used. It, it, you can call it different things, just, <coughs> excuse me, depending on what situation you're in. Okay. Okay, so we good with that? I mean, you just plug the angle into the formula. That's really about it. Once you get those three stresses identified. Okay. And then you want the shear also. Now you only have to run the shear once because the shears are have the same magnitude on every side. So if you're doing tau x1, y1 for 60, you just use the shear formula there. Plug in uh, twice 60, which is 120. Now that's the shear that acts on the 60 degree plane. So keep that in mind because we got a positive answer. Okay. So if you're looking at that element, what's going to happen now is that's 60. The shear on that plane is positive, and a positive shear rotates the element counterclockwise. Okay. Just like a positive moment does. Okay. So you can get that. <laughs> now, on the other plane, you know, really they're the same plane. They're both the 60 degree plane. That would rotate the element counterclockwise too. Now, I notice those arrows point different directions, but they, the commonality of them and why they're the same thing is they both rotate the element counterclockwise. Okay. And then the other two just meet in the corners is what they do. And they just do that and they do that. Okay. So that's how you drop those shears. So if you're going to drop that element, it'll look something like that. And that's part of this, these, both of these problems, is to drop the elements. All right, because the important thing here for me isn't so much just running the numbers. It's, it's being able to draw it and have some idea what, what the numbers mean and, you know, what, what's going to happen when you apply those stresses and that sort of thing. So what that is, is the process for finding the stress at, on that element. So you just take 60 degrees and then 150 degrees, plug it in, and get the answers, sketch it up. I mean, that's basically about it, okay? So are we doing all right with that? All right, so that's kind of step one of this biaxial stuff. You say, okay, what's the stress at such and such an angle, and you run the equations and you figure it out. Now, okay, so now the next thing to do with the biaxial stuff is to say, okay, what's the biggest stress in the element? Okay, so that's the next thing to do. So that's, you know, that, so 191, 182, they're due on Monday, all right. All right, now the next thing to do here are these principal stresses, okay? Now what we're doing here with principal stresses is we're finding the maximum and minimum stresses that act on an element. Now when I say maximum and minimum, you know, I kind of probably need to define that a little bit. Really what I mean is the most positive and the most negative. Um, and maybe a good example of what I'm talking about is the one we were just looking at, 191. Um, you know, if you ask somebody what's the, you know, the uh, maximum minimum stresses on this thing, well, the answer you get might depend on who you ask and how you define minimum. 
I mean, what the stresses, the max and min stresses on this thing are this. There's sigma um, AB is minus 5768. Sigma CD is minus 16232. And then uh, tau AB is... That's positive 562. And then tau BC is uh, negative 5062. Okay. Now, if somebody says, what's the maximum stress on that? I would say the biggest stress is 16232 compression, because that's the biggest stress I've got on it. Okay. Now, if you ask a mathematician what's the maximum stress, they might say negative 5768 because that's the most positive of the stresses, you know. So it kind of depends on how you define maximum. I define it as the absolute value, you know, the biggest absolute value, I guess, if I want to get technical about it. If I don't want to get technical about it, I'd say it's the biggest stress acting on the thing. You could have a very big compressive stress, you know, even though it's negative, it doesn't mean it's small. It's not that way, okay. You all know what I'm getting at there. It's just a kind of a matter of definition. So if I had to come up with an actual definition of principal stresses, I'd say the most positive and most negative of the stresses, if I want to be kind of technical about it. Okay? But, you know, just, just understand kind of what I mean here. Yeah. The, the maximum stress on that thing is 16,232. And then the maximum shear, if someone asked me, I'd say it's 5,062. I really wouldn't spec a sign on it, because every time you do these, there's a positive and a negative shear of equal magnitude. So anybody who knows about it's going to know there's a positive and a negative that are occurring there. It's not going to be a big deal. The other thing is, you know, if you're talking about stresses, materials act differently in tension and compression, typically. You know, a good example of that is concrete. I mean, you know, you can push on concrete, put compression on it, and, and it'll absorb quite a lot of stress before anything bad happens. But you can't pull on concrete. It doesn't handle tension very well at all has to do with the nature of concrete. It's granular. You know, there's not a lot of lap between the grains, not a lot of opportunity to build good tensile strength. Okay. So, but, um, so, you know, we got different words for positive and negative normal stress. We call one tension, the other compression. And the reason for that is materials act differently in those two modes. But there isn't near as much a distinction between positive and negative shear, because all you're talking about is the difference between that and that. And materials don't act any differently, typically, you know, I don't know, maybe Velcro does or something. I don't know, but, but you know, a typical material. You know, it just it, it'll it'll act the same way regardless of the sign on the shear. So we don't pay near as much attention to the sign on shear as we do on on normal stress. Okay. So just you know, keep that in mind too. All right. So we good with that. We got got any questions on that? Okay. Right. okay um, so. So that's just uh, the most basic thing you do. You, you, you find the stresses at an angle. You just plug the angle into the formula and find what they are. It's, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, now, this next bit is finding these principal stresses, and it's got this extra step, okay? So I treat this very much like I would treat the problem we just did, it, with the one exception is i got to find the angles I'm working with first. On problem 191 and 2, you're given the angles, and you're told to find the stress at this angle. But, but now with this principal stress stuff, we have to find the angle at which the principal stresses act. That's the first step we have to do first. Okay? That, that's what we got to do. So that's just that tangent to theta formula. It's on your formula sheet. I, you know, it's on the left there. I don't remember what number it is, but it's right on there. So now you just do the tangent to theta formula there and find the angle, and actually there's two angles. So when I solve the tangent two theta, I get two theta, which is kind of handy because that's what I use in the formulas. So I keep that two theta, I write it down, then I take half of it, and that's the actual angle I'd use for sketching or for visualizing. Okay, so the two theta is the angle I use in the formula, but if I want to visualize it or sketch it in some way, I want the single theta is really what I want. I mean, that's really where the, weak, where the plane is, where the stress is gonna act. Then I add 90 to that one, and I get the second one, because they're 90 degrees apart. 
And then while I'm at it, I double the second one to get a two theta angle. So I just get all those angles lined out. So I've got them to plug into the formula. And I've also got them to, to you know, find the uh, orientations on the sketch. Okay. So once I have the angle, and then, of course, the two theta angle, I just plug it into the formula again. Same formula, okay, that I used before. What I'm doing, I'm plugging in the angle that where I know the maximum stress acts into that formula is what I'm doing. Okay. And that'll just kick out the maximum or, or minimum stress, depending on which one it is. All right, so that radical formula that we came up with, um, formula 28 and 29, I don't use those very much. And the reason is, they're, you know, so 28 and 9 are those uh, formulas that have radicals in them. There's the tau max formula right there. That's 29. And here's the sigma max formula, normal stress formula. Now, what's up with this is what those will do is get you uh, the stress that act, there gets you the maximum and minimum stresses quickly. So I might use them if I just want to know what those are. But the one problem with those is, is I don't know which one acts at which angle when I do those radical formulas. There's a plus or minus in there. There's two stresses, a max and a min, and there's two angles. But I'm not going to be able to match them very easily But when I use that formula. I don't know which stress goes with which angle. Now, there's some tricks you can use to figure it out, but, but you're not given that information directly. So what, I've, what I do now, I don't use that very often. You know, now, if I was on a test and somebody said, hey, you know, what's the biggest normal stress in that element, I'd use that formula. It would be the quickest way to answer that particular question. But if the question is to figure out not only the stresses, but the angles at which they act and to come up with a sketch, I, I might get into a little bit of trouble with those because, again, I don't know which stress acts at which angle. So what I do instead is I find the angle first, then I plug the, the known angle into the general normal stress formula. Then I'll know this stress acts at this angle, and I can draw a sketch or visualize it or do whatever I have to do. Okay, That's how I proceed with it. Now, there's some tricks. You can use that radical formula because the principal stresses will kind of align with the original applied XY stresses. You can usually kind of figure it out. But that's a hard thing for me to teach in a real definitive way. So instead, I just find the angle, plug it into the general formula. You know, then you know exactly which stress X is which angle. There's no ambiguity. Okay. All right. So there's negative 62.5. That's the biggest compressive stress right there. And that occurs at... Uh, 14.7 degrees, okay? And then you can uh, find the second angle by adding 90 to the first one. So that's 104.7, and you double that one up, and you get 209.4. You plug that into the general formula, and you get 100.5. That occurs at 104.7. That's the other principal stress. That's the biggest tensile stress. So if you've got a spreadsheet or something programmed on your calculator, this is how I do it. If you don't and, and you're in a hurry, use this shortcut formula. It's quicker. If you got, you know, you always got sigma x and y. If you just found sigma 1, which is one of the principal stresses, you can use that to find the other principal stress. It's quicker than doing all this stuff up here, okay? So either way you do it, you get 100.5. <laughs> and that occurs at 104.7. So we, we're doing all right with that. What's the shear on that plane? You all remember? On those two principal planes, what, what's the shear there? Sound like anybody remembers. It's zero. Okay. Principal normal stress has zero shear on it. Okay. Right. So why don't you uh, sketch up that little element I've drawn there for you that doesn't have any stresses on it. So what? How are those planes oriented on there? 
and this is really what I want you to get is just this, you know, this, uh, this visualization, being able to understand what, what we're talking about here. I mean, you know, running the formulas didn't really, you know, it's just running formulas. It's not that big of a deal, but, but let's be able to draw a sketch. So once you fill this thing in, Okay. All right. So what do we got? We're doing this at fourteen point seven, and the stress at fourteen point seven is something. It's uh, sixty-two point five. Okay, like that. And then the stress ninety degrees off of that <laughs> is. Uh, 100.5, like so. Y'all okay with that? I mean, just read the angle and put the stress on it. I mean, that's about it, okay? And there's no shear on these principal planes. Okay. So, got any questions on that? Now, if you look at that, if you look at the orientation on that principal plane sketch, you know, so there's the maximum minimum stresses on that element. Notice how the maximum positive, the maximum tension is most in line with the maximum applied tension. The maximum compression is most in line with the maximum applied compression. You know, that's not a coincidence. So, you know, that, that can help you if you're drawing to kind of notice those relationships. It, it makes sense, you know, the, 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 the principal planes align themselves with the applied stresses pretty much. Okay. So that's one way, that's one way you kind of make a sketch just by looking at it. So here we got the big tensile stress, the big principal tensile. That that's, is closely aligned with the uh, applied tensile. Here's the principal compressive stress. That's closely aligned with the applied compressor. Okay. Yeah. So we're doing all right with that. Okay, we're good. All right. Um, yeah, there's uh, more fun to be had here. What we can do, we can take that principal angle, add 45 to it. That will tell you the angle at which the maximum in-plane shear stress acts. Okay, so if you take 14.7 plus 45, you get 
that's the angle where the maximum in-plane shear acts. Double that up, you get 119.4. Take that angle and plug it in for the 2 theta angle here in the formula for shear. Run the numbers, and what you get is the maximum shear in plane. It's 45 degrees off of the uh, principal plane. So it's in this case for this 59.7, it's 81.5. Now, as it happens, um, the uh, normal stress on that plane is the average normal stress. So just take the sum of these two applied normal stresses and, and divide by two, you'll get the average. In this case, it's 19. Now, is, uh, there's another little shortcut formula you can use to find the maximum shear. It's plus or minus sigma 1 minus sigma 2 over 2. So we could plug in those in-plane maximum normal stresses, watching the signs there a bit, and we'll get to the same result. Uh, the maximum shear is plus or minus 81.5. Okay. So that's another shortcut formula. That's... Um, Equation 30. Okay. All right. And then, of course, you can make a sketch. So why don't you uh, Sketch that shear on the proper plane in the proper direction just for practice there, okay? And so, again, I got that element drawn up for you there. So, um, just go ahead and put it on there. And again, it's just a matter of putting the shear at the proper angle. I mean, that's really about all there is to it. So just identify the angle that you need to use. It's up top there. And put the shear with its proper sign on it. Mm -hmm. So that's 59.7 in there. You know, that's the given angle. And then just get the shear on that plane um, such that it's positive. So you want a positive shear on that plane. And just remember what a positive shear does. What it does is it takes an element and it rotates it counterclockwise, just like moment. Okay, 
And then the, I want on the other side will rotate counterclockwise also, so it'll point the other direction to do that. So that's kind of, it looks like a couple. I mean, it's not, although it causes a couple, I guess, but it's, you know, it's not really a couple, I guess. And, but that's what it looks like. And then the other two meet at the corners is what they do. So that's how that goes. And then it looks like the average normal stress, which would act on all four planes, is tensile. 19 is what that is. Okay. So we've got uh, 81.5 for the shear and 19 for the normal stress. A little crowded there, so I won't put the units in, but that's, that's what we got. All right. So, uh, so that's the deal with that. So we got any questions on that? Doing all right. Okay. Now that's the basics on these principal stresses. So, so the two things you can do with this stuff is one, if you want to know the angle at which a stress acts, you know, or excuse me, the stress at a given angle, you just plug the angle in and find what the stress is. Two, if you want to find these principal stresses, you find the angle first, then you plug it in. Okay. So you can either be given the angle, or in the case of principal stresses, have to find the angle. Okay. Now, let's see here. A couple other things. Well, there's always a couple other things, I guess, but <laughs> here we go. Um, now, this principal stress angle, it, or excuse me, the, the, the shortcut formula for principal stress looks like that. So it's sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus or minus the square root of sigma x minus sigma y over 2 squared plus tau xy squared. That's, that's the formula to find the two principal stresses in a hurry. And that's formula 28. I don't use it a whole lot, but it's there if you need it. And then formula 29 is very similar. 29 is to find tau max in plane, the maximum in plane shear stress. That's plus or minus that same radical. Sigma x minus sigma y over 2 squared plus tau xy squared. See, this is the second part of the principal normal stress formula. So if that's the case, we can get to some of these shortcut formulas we were using there. Um, so what we can do is substitute in tau max in for this stuff. So instead of using that term, you can just use tau max. And if you do that, you can reach some conclusions here on this, okay? Um, so what you got there is sigma 1 and 2, which are the principal normal stresses is sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus or minus tau max. So sigma 1 is that term plus tau max. Sigma 2 is that term minus tau max. So if you uh, take the difference there between sigma 1 and 2, you get sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus tau max minus sigma x plus sigma y over 2 minus tau max. You get the minus a negative. So that's actually positive tau max. So what you get there is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is 2 tau max. So tau max, then, is plus or minus the maximum normal stress minus the minimum normal stress over 2. That's a shortcut formula to get tau max. And that's uh, formula 30 is what that is, okay? So that's a little shortcut formula that's used sometimes. And then the other formula that we use sometimes is if we add sigma 1 and 2, we get sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus tau max plus sigma x plus sigma y over 2 minus tau max plus or minus tau max is cancel. We get sigma 1 plus sigma 2 is sigma x plus sigma y. And that's that shortcut formula for finding one of the uh, normal stresses when you have the other. Okay, And that's formula 31. So that's where those come from. Okay. So again, 
again, there's just a lot of information here, so I just encourage you to keep kind of keep looking at this and working at it a bit. You know, so you, the more you work with it, the more sense it makes, and the more you keep all this stuff straight. There is a lot of stuff here. Now, why don't we look at one other little thing that has to do with this? It can be important sometimes, so we want to uh, have a look at it. And this is page 360. So page 360, let's look at something else here that comes up. So on 360, we have that equation written out again. Tau max is plus or minus sigma max minus sigma min over 2. And that is basically equation 30 is what that is. In the xy plane, sigma max and sigma min are sigma 1 and sigma 2. That's the notation we use for those. Okay, And we're dealing with biaxial stress, so we get stresses in two directions. But of course, objects are three-dimensional. So there's actually a third stress that we have to consider, and that's sigma z, which is zero for biaxial stress. So, you know, we draw up these little elements like that. We put stresses on them, you know, whatever. But really, you know, um, you know, like that, and like that, or whatever we got. You know, this is how we draw these things up. But the thing to remember is they're actually three-dimensional, okay? Even though we treat them like they're 2D, they're not. They're 3D. They actually look like that, okay? And so there is a third stress acting on these things like that. And what that is is sigma Z. And when you're talking about biaxial loading, sigma Z is always equal to zero. So when we look at this little formula here, we've got to be a little careful on that, that sometimes sigma min will be one of our in-plane principal stresses, but sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll be sigma z, which is zero. So we got to watch that, because that can have some pretty big effects sometimes. Okay, So this is page 360 is where I'm at. And let's look at this one here. Okay, So let's say we've got some principal stresses that are shown that they're positive 50 and negative 10. Okay. Now, if we want to find tau max using this little shortcut formula, sigma max would be 50, sigma min would be negative 10, so tau max in plane would be 50 minus a negative 10 over 2 would be plus or minus 30. Now, what we can also do then is look at this plane up here and say, okay, that's got 50 acting on it like that. And then it's got sigma z, which is coming off that away, and that's zero. Okay, and we could look at that plane and see what the maximum shear stress is on that plane, just to be sure that isn't our absolute maximum stress, right there. In that case, sigma max would be 50, sigma min would be zero, It'd be plus or minus 50 minus zero over two. That'd be plus or minus 25. So when you compare the two, in this case it would turn out that the in-plane stress governs. This one governs, okay? Because it's bigger than 25. So in that case, it's no big deal. It's the in-plane shear stress that's the biggest. That's what you would design that plate for. Okay. All right, now let's look at the example on the bottom of that page. Okay. Let's say we, our principal stresses are 50 and positive 50 and positive 10. So instead of positive 50 and negative 10, they're positive 50 and positive 10. Tau max in plane would be 50 minus 10 over 2. That's plus or minus 20. Tau max out of plane would be 50 minus 0 over 2, and that's 25. That means the out of plane stress would govern on that one. Right. So you got to watch that when you're designing. You can't always assume that tau max is in plane. Sometimes it's out of plane, and you have to account for that. Or you might get a 
a bad surprise. If you're designing something, okay, engineering is kind of like economics and stocks. We don't like surprises, okay? We don't like to know what's going to happen. So, so watch that. And I'll show you one example in, I don't know, a couple weeks from now when that's a kind of a big deal. Okay, so it's something we want to be aware of. That, that you check both cases, pick the bigger of the two. And see, when I say tau max out of plane, that's kind of a long, fancy name. But what that really means is that's what you're going to design the thing for, is the maximum shear. So that you, know, you really want to know what that number is if you're designing something, because that's what you design for. Okay. All right, so I've got an example here, 362, I think, that illustrates that. So we're going to stress this plate as shown. <coughs> and so we got 120 for sigma x, we got 50 for sigma y, and tau xy is 30. We want to figure out what the principal stresses are, the design stresses, basically. So we'll do the tangent 2 theta formula, and we'll get 2 theta is 40.6. Take half of that for the real angle that it occurs at, it's 20.3. At 90, we get 110.3. That's the other principal angle. Double that so we know what to plug into the formula. That's 220.6. So I, that's, I always do that, okay? Do that tangent 2 theta formula. Find 2 theta 1, have it to get theta 1. At 90 to get theta 2, and double that to get 2 theta 2. Okay? Those are the angles I, I'm going to work with. The 2 theta angles are the ones I plug into the formula. The single theta angles are what I would use on a sketch. Okay. Those are the real angles, the single theta formulas. Then I just plug the angles in, get the two stresses. So the principal stresses, when I plug those angles into that the general normal stress formula, 25. Sigma 1 is 131. Sigma 2 is 38.9. Here's how I could get that 38.9 using that uh, shortcut formula. So if I'm going to design that thing, that's a plate of some type, I'm going to design it for 131 for normal stress. That's the biggest one. Okay? That's what that formula tells you. And that 131, if I need to know where it occurs, it looks like it's going to occur on this 20.3 degree plane. So it's going to do that. Okay. All right, now, when you design stuff, you know, you design it for a couple of things. You design it for normal stress, and you design it for shear. So let's figure out what the shear is, okay? Okay, the shear is going to um, occur 45 degrees off of the principal normal stress angle. So 20.3 plus 45 gets me 65.3. Double that up to put it in the formula. It's 130.6. Plug it into the general shear formula. That's uh, 26. And I get 85. No, I don't. I get negative 46.1. That's what I get. So that's the maximum in-plane shear stress. All right, so if I sketch that up, it'll look like so, because I get my average normal stress at 85. So in the plane, the biggest shear stress is 46.1. But i got to be careful. I can't necessarily design for that. I want to check the out-of-plane shear stress, too. And to do that, I use that tau max is plus or minus sigma max minus sigma min over 2 formula. That's... Uh, 30, equation 30. All right. So tau max in plane would be the maximum in plane normal stress, which is 131.1, minus the minimum, which is 38.9 over 2. And those are always plus or minus. So that's plus or minus 46.1. That's the maximum in plane shear stress. But for the out of plane shear stress, What's happening there is I've got that 131.1 um, pulling this away. And in the z direction, 
I guess that works. 3D-ish. I don't know. Looks a little funny, but we'll just go with it, I guess. In the Z direction there, I've got zero. So that would be 131.1, which is sigma max minus sigma min, which is zero over two. And that's 65.6. So the out of plane shear stress governs in that example. That's the big one. That's what you got to design it for. Okay. So kind of a finer point there, but one to, to, to know about. See, that's a good, uh, you know, it's, that's getting near to 50% more than the in-plane. Not quite, but it's getting there. And, you know, a, that's, that could be trouble. Okay, so that plane then would be 45 degrees across that edge. That's how, that, that would be the failure plane if it were to fail on that. Right. Any uh, questions on that then? Yeah. So basically what the low potential is the out plane. Yeah, right. If if the in plane if the principal stresses actually have the same sign, so if they're both in tension or both in compression, the out of plane shear will govern. If the principal stresses have different signs, the in plane Sure, we'll cover it. That's basically how that works. And it has to do with kind of the minus and negative effect. It's one of them. You know, All right. Um, so, how about doing a couple of these for Wednesday? How about 201 and 202? Now, when you're doing these things, uh, let's see, 201, 202, let's write that down, 201 and 202, that's due Wednesday. Um, now, remember to do the sketches on these things, okay? Because that's one thing I remember from years past is I often take points off because people don't do the sketches. And, you know, I want you to do the sketches. They're important to kind of visualize what's really going on with these. So, you know, I have to do the sketches. I've even got keys for the sketches in the packet. They're right there. So... Just be sure you can sketch these things up and you kind of understand what, what's stacked in which direction, okay?